This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 881, It Could Be Far Worse, and Stop Doing, both by Lori Deshane of tinybuddha.com, and I'm Justin Mollick, your personal narrator, reading to you every day just like an audiobook, but free of charge. I have two posts today for you from Tiny Buddha, that's from the creator of the site, Lori Deshane. Before we get to it, I just took my own blood. Yep, you heard that right. I did an at-home blood test just an hour or two ago, and it was surprisingly easy. I'll tell you more specifics about that at the end. But I'll quickly tell you the company is Everly Well, and they can test food sensitivity, metabolism, your thyroid, and a lot more. Head to everlywell.com and use the code OPTIMAL for 15% off. But again, I'll give you more details a little later. For now, let's hear today's two posts and continue optimizing your life. It Could Be Far Worse by Lori Deshane of tinybuddha.com. Quote, if you count all your assets, you always show a profit. Robert Quillen. This weekend, someone broke into my apartment and stole everything of significant monetary value that I owned. They stole my jewelry box with pieces I got from my boyfriend, his mother, and my sister after she'd gone through a breakup and wanted to unload a vast collection from her past. They stole several purses in my closet and confusing it for another, also took my makeup bag. They took my laptop bag containing my new MacBook, my wallet, my passport, my glasses, and my boyfriend's old iPhone, which I've been using to play games. They grabbed a stack of DVDs, though I can't remember which. Lastly, they took my hamper after emptying it on my bedroom floor to carry all their loot. Oddly, but thankfully, they took nothing of my boyfriend's. That night, I'd been at a neighbor's house with a few friends peeling lemons to make limoncello. I was supposed to be in New Orleans with my boyfriend and others for Jazz Fest, but I'd backed out after my doctor told me it wasn't wise so soon after my surgery. When I walked into my bedroom after arriving home and saw the clothes on my floor, I wondered why I would have done that. I hadn't yet noticed the other missing items, and I just assumed if something was awry, I'd done it and forgotten. Then I started looking around and realized someone had been in my home. My heart started racing, my face went flush, and the tiny hairs on the back of my neck stood up. I wondered if someone was still there, hiding, waiting, or watching. So I ran downstairs and called my neighbor who came right over with the others. Thankfully, they did everything for me. They called the police, they called my apartment community security, and they even wrote a checklist of things I needed to do, including canceling cards and setting up credit monitoring alerts. Later that night, I realized The burglars hadn't taken my old laptop, which still had most of my documents and photos saved. The next day, I found my passport. After remembering, I'd finally realized it wasn't smart to carry it with me daily. Suddenly, I felt an immense sense of gratitude because despite what I lost, it could have been far worse. I could have lost everything related to my work. I could have been left with no ID. I could have never bought renter's insurance. And the worst possible outcome, I could have been home when this happened. I could have been the victim of a far more tragic crime. But I wasn't. I was alive and well with friends looking out for me. And I had the capacity to do everything on their list, to follow each step one by one and put things back together. Sometimes when things go wrong, it can seem overwhelming to make things right. But the amazing thing is that we usually can. We can put together the pieces. We can do it even more effectively if we stay calm Start with one simple step and remember, eventually, it will all get done. I didn't sleep much on Friday night and I didn't feel well on Saturday when I went to my bank and lens crafters for new glasses. But today, as I write this on Sunday, I am well rested and I'm here, still alive, still loved, still doing what I love. Anytime we can say that, it's a beautiful day. I have another post from her for you, but first, I gotta tell you about this in-home blood test I did. Going to the doctor and finding time to get important lab testing done is difficult, plus expensive, but you can complete testing in-home now thanks to EverlyWell. EverlyWell is an at-home health testing company that lets you take tests like food sensitivity, metabolism, thyroid, inflammation, and vitamin D, and a lot more privately through certified labs. They'll ship it right to you You take it at your convenience, then ship it back in their provided postage paid envelope and you'll get your results within just five days. No more waiting rooms. 
So I got the food sensitivity test because I've always wondered if certain foods have been causing me inflammation like recently. I received it today, took the test, and mailed it back all before coming here to record, so that's how easy it is. Come by everlywell.com and use the code OPTIMAL for 15% off your first order. Again, head to everlywell.com and get 15% off with the code OPTIMAL. Take control of your health today with Everly Wells at-home health tests. Stop Doing by Lori Deshane of tinybuddha.com. Quote, the only Zen you find on tops of mountains is the Zen you bring up there. Robert M. Persig. We live in a fast-paced, achievement-oriented society. At the end of a busy, to-do list-focused day, we often find ourselves mentally and physically exhausted and uncertain whether we're actually moving in the right direction in the pursuit of happiness. Perhaps this explains our fascination with all things Zen. It's become a buzzword in pop culture, branding products that have little to do with peace and enlightenment, and oftentimes represent ideas that are diametrically opposed. Zen Dharma teacher Reverend Lin Seip takes an interesting look at Zen in titles in print publications on all topics from automobiles to music. Some notable titles include Engine Zen, The Zen of Contractor Relations, and Zen in the Art of Propane Safety. Then there's a vast world of products branded with Zen, tea, candles, rakes, fans, stones, books, eye masks, pillows, fountains, wind chimes, bath products, incense, oils, and home decor, all intended to soothe our harried minds. It's ironic that their acquisition requires more doing and earning and possibly more stress. We reach for our wallet to buy little pieces of peace because we're programmed to fix problems by doing. Sometimes doing itself is the problem. Our minds are like little hamster wheels, desperate to reach some point down the road when things get easy or things make sense. In all reality, we never get there. There will never be a moment in time when everything feels done, when everything is certain, when there's no pain or discomfort. Life is a constant juggling act of items in the inbox, people to please, feelings to process, tasks to complete, experiences to be had, and problems to face. And that's a beautiful thing. At any given time, we have opportunities to learn, grow, change, and experience life. There's no shortage of things to do in this world, new hobbies to try, challenges to take on at work, steps to take to strengthen relationships, It's all available to us at any time. The key to enjoying these undertakings is learning to completely stop in between. Stop thinking, stop analyzing, stop worrying, stop planning, and simply do nothing for a while. It's one of the most difficult things to do in this world. It's why fewer people meditate than buy little Zen fountains for their desks. But stillness is far more rewarding than the gratification of making an impulse purchase and the fleeting moment of joy you feel when rippling water offsets the sound of your typing. You don't need a complicated plan to spend five, 10, or even 60 minutes doing nothing. You just need commitment to that goal. Find an uncluttered space where you won't be distracted, preferably somewhere with minimal technology. Write down everything on your mind and then move that paper to a different room. If it helps, put on some soothing music. Be sure you haven't eaten or drank anything recently so your body doesn't put a snag in your plans. And then work at being still and clear-headed, starting with just a few moments. Inhale and exhale deeply, focusing solely on your breath. It may help to visualize your breath filling and draining from different parts of your body, starting with your feet and ending with your head. If thoughts come into your head, simply notice them and let them go. You will spend your whole life juggling different thoughts, jumping back and forth between true presence in the moment and thought processes or feelings that pull you out. Make a goal today to spend at least a few moments in the former state. It will definitely change your day and it just may change your life. You just listened to the posts titled It Could Be Far Worse and Stop Doing, both by Lori Deshane of tinybuddha.com. I definitely related to that burglary robbery story. I think I mentioned it on this podcast. It must've been a year or more ago that the place where I record my family's house was broken into and luckily my mom had the alarm set and she was gone. So they didn't get too much. I don't even think my mom could list what they got away with. So that's a good thing, but still scary. 
but I could relate exactly to how she felt in that. And if you've been through that situation, I'm sure you related too. And like she said, hey, if you're still listening, it could have been worse. I'm just glad you are still able to listen to this. And I love that stop doing post too. If you can today, just take five minutes to try that little meditation practice. Focus on your breath. If a thought comes in, just go right back to focusing on your breath. Sounds simple, but it's really hard. If you can do it for five minutes, awesome. Even two minutes, one minute, anything, it's worth a shot. But that should do it for Thursday episode. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the Friday show tomorrow where your optimal life awaits. Hey, this is Dan from the Optimal Finance Daily Podcast, which is a lot like this show, except more focused on personal finance. Justin handpicks the best posts he can find from blogs and authors like Ramit Sethi, Mr. Money Mustache, and more, and I read them to you five days a week. So if you enjoy this podcast, come on over and subscribe to Optimal Finance Daily too. And together, we'll optimize your financial life. You've been listening to Optimal Living Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.